Okay, my friends, this is going to be fun. This is a heart valve, and I believe it's the aorta. And these are some of the plumbing from that heart. And so is this, and over in this area, I will show you in some detail. And when I did the video on this a while back, I did get somebody that's a heart specialist said, yes, I see it, and I know what they are chordate tendi or something and and I will show you what it is and that's what it is it's part of a gigantic heart all right the first thing to notice is the thick wall here and this outside edge around it and this yellow and red here and I can't really tell because of the shade, but I think that's black down in there. But there will be the different colors of blood. These are not roots of a tree or anything. Those are actually blood vessels, and some of it are chordate tendi, I believe, is what this expert said, which holds, anchors it in place. And then you also have the blood vessels. All right, now I would assume these are the heart strings, the cordi tendon, and these little spots right here are from the, probably from the vein tube, and they have clamps to stop it from going backwards. They may have them on both sides, I don't know, but there should be a valve in here going one way or the other. Now, I don't know, I would, I don't know. But the, this is going to be a valve, and I believe that was a valve too. They sit on the top of the heart, and then the heart would be down below there, I would imagine. And these little cordi would run down into, and could be the heart strings they, that help. I don't know exactly how they work, to be perfectly honest with you. Well, let's look at them. Okay, I've been looking over what Diana said, and I have to totally agree. At first I thought, eh... I'm not really sure, but then I looked it over and over, and yes, I agree. Because where we are is right down at the, at the valve. We're not somewhere way up here at the plumbing. At first I thought we were up in here somewhere, but no. We're down right in here where this cordae is, is this tendon is. And it is right down at, remember it's kind of a thick layer, there's two layers almost? That's it right there. There's the outside layer, then there's the inside layer, and that's the heart strings. And here it is right here. There's the outside layer, then there's the inside layer. And it, it looks like they come under here and they bubble up, which is exactly what the cordae do. Now, this looks to me like it's a vein. Or, you know, it's got a valve. In other words, it goes out, out this way and not come back, or it comes in this way and not go back one way or the other. Now, there's a bunch of little, you know, I don't know what else is going on here, but this, and then the colors, the red and the yellow, indicate to me there's some blood action going on there. But the de depth of these walls, it, it gives you that really heavy-duty um, attachment that you, you need to keep you going 24 hours a day for your entire life. That's tough stuff. All right, so as far as I'm concerned, that closes that case. That is a heart valve, and that's in Yemen. And um, that, not only that, here's one here. You see that? Same thing. It fell out of the ceiling here. This must have been a whole heart down here, and they mined it all out of here where all the blood came down into the bucket of blood, which is below. And it, is, it was right up here, and then it just thing just collapsed, and they thought it was like a tree trunk or something. But you can see, there's that layer again. And up here in the ceiling, this was all coal mining stuff. So I'm, I'm saying this is basically the same as what you were seeing before. And this one at one time was a heart.
That's my opinion. All right, I think I mentioned to you, I got interrupted several times here, but this foot, I am going to go into how it works and how these springs work and what this strap is and this strap here. And I'm going to show it in extreme detail and how I believe it functions. And it is, uh, it's an elegant little device. And here it is right here. And there's that strap and there's the heel bone. That strap breaks up here somewhere. And this old scuggly stuff here. Oh, that is the wrinkle zone. When a, when a tendon breaks, it goes boing and it gets all wrinkly here. And this didn't get wrinkly because it's, it still has, it's not twanged all the way down. It wrinkles in a zone. They call it a wrinkle zone, and that is that wrinkle zone right there. And the same thing with your Achilles tendon. You break your Achilles tendon, there's this place like this big, it's all wrinkly. Because the tendon just snaps. And it goes, doing. Now, I got a lot to go over. She made some statements. I'm going to go over all the things one more time. And we're going to get into the Giants. You know, this stuff was, it sounds just absolutely insane. But the evidence seems to support the things that were written that were just beyond anybody's wildest dreams. And it's just one of those things that fell into my lap. It's not something I went searching. Well, I did go searching for it, but it was because I, I got a message. Go search. I did. And I did find. So we're going to be going through all of this stuff. I'm going to go picture by picture by picture. Her statements, my statements, her evidence, my evidence. She seems to think it's kind of silly, the biggest thing in pareidolia. And, and they were talking about all kinds of things. Everything I talk about, they immediately start just crushing it. Now, I don't think she's like that. I don't know. I don't know her. But um, I would like to engage and say, you know, let's discuss this. I see what you're saying, I, and I fully understand that my side of it is just beyond anybody's wildest dreams. Yes. That doesn't mean it's not true. If the evidence supports it, well, the evidence supports it. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And somebody asked me about whale rock. I think whale rock is something like this from, but most of it's all worn away and there's just a few left. That's somewhere in the gut. I think that's some of the alveoli in the gut. <laughs> you see this? There's a picture called penis rock and it's this stuff here eroded. All right, and you're gonna think it's a penis? Like whatever? No, what did I show you? It's, it's eroded, and if you look at it just a certain way, it looks like a penis. But it's just this stuff here eroded. That is villi in the gut. You see that? You have to be standing exactly in a certain position to see this. And it does look like a this is a person. That's fairly good size. But that's not exceptionally big. Yes, there were pagans back in those days. Well, I suppose this could be a toadstool, or it could have been long before Viagra. All I can say is you use what you got, you know, do, do something with what you got. Well, that's what he did. <laughs> it looks pretty good. I mean, I, I, I probably wouldn't want to live there, but who knows. All right, this is, uh, this is clever. <laughs> this is uh, innovative and... Uh... <laughs> okay, my friends, this is quite resourceful. I mean, I think you're going to have something here that's, first of all, bulletproof. <laughs> Secondly, probably earthquake-proof. I don't know, that's, that's a pretty good... That's a pretty good package there, you know, to deal with. <laughs> Oh, man, I'll tell you, it doesn't get any crazier. Every day it gets crazier. All right, like I said, I'm going to wrap it up now. She's saying these are layers of sedimentary rock, a history book written in stone. Well, yes and no. It, it's, I don't think it's what she thinks it is. Well, I know it's not what she thinks it is because it is actually this right here. It's these. 
sort of laid back. I have other pictures of them. I mean, there are so many of them in your gut, you can't possibly believe it. Here she's showing it again. She's saying, uh, I forget what she's saying here, but she's saying it's just natural sedimentary erosion. And um, that's just not the case. It is this right here. These are intestinal villi. This guy's got a little gas. <laughs> And those are the little things that absorb all the food in you as you eat. But you have to have the right enzymes. I keep talking about enzymes because they're the most important thing. Now, oh, and here's another picture of it. Look at the, look, look, look at how, look at them. Look at that. And all these little rings are the, the way it works to move your food down through there. Of course, this is a really cleaned out colon probably from an autopsy I would imagine. I don't think they get quite that clean. Um, and I'm sure this was from looking at some problem. You know, normally I get my shots from where they're doing, you know, looking into damage. Basically, I get them, you know, with broken bones and a ripped tendon and a pulled muscle and heart attack victims and brain injuries and everything else. And you can see the most from those kind of things. So, um, but anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through all this top to bottom in another video. Because it just, just takes forever to do this. It really does to do it right. But these are the kind of things that she was seeing. And all that stuff, that's like mucus stuff, bacteria. Look at that. You see it? There's a lot to learn by just paying attention to things. And if you don't have the right kind of enzymes, you cannot create the chemistry to deal with these kind of things that are trying to invade you 24-7, continuously. You have to have the right enzymes. There's 75,000 that they know of enzymes at least in the human body. And every one of those is required to do a chemical reaction, which would take, literally they say, millions of years to happen if it wasn't for the enzyme, and the enzyme can make it happen in less than one second. You think I'm kidding? Here. This goes way back, 1995. And he's still talking about it now. He reported without a particular enzyme, a biological transformation he deemed absolutely essential for your body to work, creating the building blocks of DNA and RNA. It would take 78 million years. All right. They found another one that would take 2.3 billion years, about half the age of the Earth. Enzymes can make that reaction happen in milliseconds. That's thousands of a second versus millions of years. That's how elegant these enzymes are. If you don't have them, you're done. And every enzyme is created by a bacteria. And they have 75,000 of them that they know of now. All right, the enzymes are the factor, I mean, bacteria are the factories that produce enzymes, and there's approximately 75,000 different enzymes in the human body. They're only made by bacteria. Bacteria squirt out a whole series of these polypeptide balls, chain, and it all forms into a cluster. And that's what's called an enzyme, and it is just so elegant, it's unbelievable. And it does as you just saw, chemistry in millions of years worth of chemistry in less than a second. Just nothing, and it doesn't even get used up. It does that one, and it does another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, because inside of us, the chemistry that is bubbling in us is just stunningly fast. Enzymes and bacteria are just proliferating in your body, and you can get sick and die from having a lack of enzymes in an hour. And that's called acute radiation sickness, where you get a blast of energy and all your enzymes die. And then you start to throw up. You got diarrhea, you vomit, you get acid in your stomach, you get all kinds of bloating and nastiness. And then 
you get weak and, and literally will die. And that happens within one hour. You don't die right away. The only reason you die is because you don't have the enzymes to support your life. You killed all your bacteria. Bacteria cells are just little tiny thin cells. Your body can withstand that radiation mostly, but not the cells in bacteria. All right, there's a whole series of things they talk about, but the bottom line is, as they say, most bacteria are more vulnerable to radiation than human cells. But certain bacteria are much more resistant, have much more resistance than we have. So it depends on a species. Well, the, the species of bacteria they're talking about extremely resistant. Some of them have can live in jet fuel. They haven't, they can live in acids. They're designed for this. I'm telling you, bacteria are the, 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 the chemists that run everything that happens because they're the only thing basically to create enzymes. Without the enzymes, millions of years of chemistry to do what happens in one second, less than a second. And without them, you, couldn't, you would fall over dead within two minutes, they say.